Hello guys, welcome back to Go Discs. In this sort of range, little bit of a series really, I'm sort of ranking new Doctor Who, like new new Who, very much from, from 2005 to present. I'm ranking the series actually, see how it goes, you know, for my you know, personal favourite seasons, really. you know, like leap from worst to best really. So that's the main gist. And so if you wonder why I'm not doing these in chronological order, it's just I like to do sort of like a ranking video really. So we're starting off with the worst, end off with the best. So, so yeah, here we go. So. As the title suggests, it's Series 9 from 2015, Peter Capaldi's second se series, and Jane Coleman's third and last. Or well, third, second, second and a half se season, if you know, it depends on Series 7, really. Uh, series 9. So, in all honesty, this is probably one of the worst films of Doctor Who I have ever experienced, really. Um, I'll go through, through to the episodes as well. So 12 stories, mainly two parts, which is an in which is an interesting thing, of course, you know, like, we're getting, you know, we're getting like, oh, you know, like, mainly two parts in the story, it's like, you know, best, you know, good storytelling of two, you know, two episodes, like, yeah, that'll be interesting, you know, looking forward to it, and um, actually watching it throughout, it's like, uh, you know, and actually looking back on it, it's very sort of, in hindsight, probably not, you know, it's not, it's not one of the best Moffat era series ever, really. And you probably see this like, like you know, over, over on really, you know, but who knows, but there we go. So let's go down to it. So let's go to the episodes really. So this is but not best of all, because obviously we know about everything else, you know, like, you know, Capaldi, Coleman, whatever. So let's go through this. So episodes one and two are two-parter, which is the Magician Apprentice, Mr. Magician's Apprentice, and which is familiar. Um, no good start. It's one of the worst openers ever. Season openers, I would say. You know, there, are, there there'll be some, of course, but it's one of the worst. Magician's Apprentice drags really. Um, obviously, people who actually probably watched, you know, probably watched Doctor Who, so fell out, fell, fell out with the show recently. Actually, came back to it, and obviously, you know, come back and watching Capaldi round at playing the playing electric guitar. It's like, and that's all. That's all stopped them watching for a while. Really, I think maybe until Whitaker came aboard, actually. I don't know, but it really took, it's, it, put, it put a bad taste in people's mouths, really, and it's not, you know, I think it's just episode one drags, really, and yeah, it was, you know, not really the best, really, and same goes to Mag Magician Princess, which is familiar, um, obviously it sounds Scarborough this time, because Davros returns, Julian Bleach returns, you know, and it's interesting seeing, da seeing, uh, seeing Davros again after many years, you know, since 2008, obviously, it's it's um what do you call it? It's more you know, it's it's a Doctor Davros story, the Daleks are sort of plays second fiddle, so the um, Missy as well, as you know, indeed. And it's like mm, you know, it's like, you know, you spent more more than more of the Daleks, you know, obviously they brought back a lot of original stuff, of course. Um I would say that it you know, it's like, you know, it's it's all sort of improves on a sound of the Daleks, but uh the story's just like mm, you know, it really just doesn't Hold justice, you know, like the whole idea of da Clara inside a Dalek casing is like, uh, you know, that's like, you know, it's just like doing stu stupid, weird stuff. Of course, the Doctor not recognizing her, just you know, nearly kills it, nearly killing her, under the under this old like, you know, the guy of Missy really, in a way, like you know, just telling him, you know, no, it's just a Dalek. Clara's killed. And whatever, and this is the one responsible for doing it. Obviously, trying to you know, in, you know manip manipulate the Doctor into killing her. And I feel like it, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work, unfortunately. So, that, for a start, it doesn't. It's not a good one, really. You know, not a good series opener. There have been better ones, of course, and you know, you know, before and since, obviously. Um, so next up, we've got is Under the Lake and Before the Flood. Um, just to mention, of course, um, that's written by Stephen Moffat, of course. Um, Borrows elements from Curse of Phil Death as well, so there, so there we go. Um, not, not there. If you watch Mr. Ta Mr. Taz's Dalek Sember, you know, it gives you a nice little. He does a good an outstanding review of that, of course. So let's go to Under the Lake Before the Flood, uh, Before the Flood episode 3 and 4, made by Tubbery House. This is the better, this is probably the only best two episodes ever in the series, you know, because it's based on the siege story. There's interesting good stuff as well, like with the ghosts and everything. You know, like, you know, are the ghosts or are they totally different? Is it alien or whatever? And it has an interesting idea. Also, it plays around with the whole time thing, of course. Like, you know, one, you know, f the first half is set in, like, in the, in the future, in a, in, a, in a base called the underworld base called the Drum. And you go to uh, 1980, 
or some in the eighties, very much like some abandoned, like you know, abandoned town, or like some, um, what do you call it, like a military nuke town, or something. What do you, what do you call it? And obviously, you encounter the Vishaki, you get Prentice as well, who's one of those Tavorians, I think he pronounces it, from the God Complex. So, bit of, bit of um, calls back to that one, of course, especially with, with Prent the character of Prentice as an undertaker, which is interesting. Um, the other cast as well in this one, Colin McFarlane, of course, is in this, in this Paul Kay, who plays Prentice as well in prosthetics. I think the character, you know. The, the drums uh, characters actually are, are pretty interesting. You know, there's some you do get the odd, the odd sort of like, you know, Carter Burke type character from Aliens, of course. And I forgot his name. I forgot his name now, but he ends up being drowned, of course, in um, in one one of the locks he does. Um, you get one a character who's deaf as well. Who's sort of that's interesting. That is, and also also the great scene in Before the Flood when she's um, on the floor. And she can hear like vibrations of a, of a ghost carrying an axe right behind her, just dragging, dragging this fire axe just behind her, you know. And she uses a uh, uses um you know the sonics and of course the sound waves from touching, and it and that's actually pretty very good, you know. It's a really good, amazing two parter. It is, you know, probably one of Capaldi's best really, you know, because it sort of it homages classic Doctor Who in a way, you know, and it just one of works. Lovely film as well. Also, they use use quite a bit of water as well for practical stuff as well. So there we go. Uh, but that's a highlight, that is. That's the main highlight of this series. Unlike the Full of Flood, nothing else. I'll explain why when we get, get to the later stuff on that one, on, on the series. So, next up we've got is episodes 5 and 6, The Girl Who Died and The Woman Who Lived. They're sort of two separate stories, really. Again, not very good. I really don't... Well, the, the, the one good little thing about that is, is the Maya. Very interesting uh, alien race design device is actually pretty good. Very Bioshock as well, and obviously you open you open up natural little case like little heads. It's like Nemesis from Resident Evil, really. Uh, just reminds me of that. Um, Odin, David Schofield, uh, you know, a bit pointless, really. You know, obviously there's that weird bit of like being like Monty Python, the Holy Grail, but it's very, very so on the nose, and it's like, uh, really? You know, it's, it feels like that, really. So it feels like, it feels like a Python sketch. Mixed with a bit of dashing Game of Thrones and everything else, it's, it's not the best. Maisie Williams is terrible, 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 terrible as a shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I'm not really a fan of Maisie Williams, so there we go. And yeah, obviously, the whole thing of the Doctor's face, like why I chose his face, they could have done so much better with it, really. Like, oh, it's just like, you know, they should have done it like maybe. Maybe at the end of the series, really, like why he chose it, like an end of end of series nine as a finale. That's all makes it like he comes to revelation. It's like yes, I've chosen it. Obviously, you do get the sort of flashbacks to um, Fires of Pompeii in that you know in that story, you know in Girl Who Died. Uh, but it's been like uh, really, you know, this middle season in a bit of a crap story. It's like uh, there we go. And then we've got the woman who lived. Um, not really good, really. I would say. You know, you got this weird funny cat. I don't know what they call it now, but like lying people. You know, sort of funny cat mistakes looking, really. Rufus Hound, Rufus Hound is in it, and of course. He's gone to bigger successions playing the meddling monk in Big Finish, which is actually interesting. Then Sam Swift, of course, you know. As a, I think he's, he probably portrays the monk, same with Grain Guard and a bit more better, in, you know, in terms of Big Finish. Who knows? I haven't really, you know, really checked that stuff out yet, but it might be interesting. Um, but at this moment, again, it's not very good. It's interesting because Clara's not in it as much in this story, actually. You know, it's more the Doctor on his own, really. Like, some of them, she teams up with um, me. She's just called me, which is stupid. Uh, but he did sort of relate back to what was going on with the production of Series 9. Obviously, with Coleman leaving, of course, there was an idea of, like, the Doctor was, you know, Capaldi handling a series on his own. You sort of get this in Woman Who, Woman Who Lived, Bit much like you have guest stars, of course, like you know, coming around, you know, just assisting the doctor and just meeting random people, but also again, Heaven Sent is another example of that as well. So, obviously, they were playing, you know, that would have been interesting, you know, like say, rather than you know, it's a bit like you think of Deadly Assassin, of course, uh, well, times that by 12 or something, but you know, do like that, well, for 12, 12 stories, that would have been interesting, actually. It might have been one of Capaldi's best seasons if that was ever taken on, or have famous say. Be shown or or whatever you know in series nine you know it would have made, made some different things really, but obviously of course you get Coleman return, but also the writers of course were sort of like you know pushing Capaldi's Doctor in a different totally different direction, which is like mm, really I don't really care about that, unfortunately. Um, so 
there we go. He, he was much. I think he was better in Series Eight when he was more dark than everything else. And also the lighter. Again, he, he, marked, he saw badges both in Series Ten, his last one, really, which we'll get to eventually. So, woman, woman who lived. Yeah. Catherine uh, Kajena wrote that one. He wrote Torchwood stories, which are actually better, really. I would say Torchwood stuff's better than what she wrote for Doctor Who. Girl Who Died was written by Jim Matheson and Stephen Moffat. I'd probably say Jim Matheson probably wrote it. In, probably want to, you know, I would say, you know, he can write a story himself. I mean, obviously, what he's been done in Series Eight and what he's done in Series Ten is fantastic stuff. Here, obviously, Moffat sort of interfered with the script, really. So it's like, there we go. So it, I'd probably say, you know. You know, I think Mouson had a great idea for a story, of course, and Moffat just sort of tapped on the story arc thing. It's, it's like, I think Moffat might have done most of it, really, in terms of rewriting. I just don't know, really, but there we go. Uh, then we've got the Zygon version, Zygon, Inver Zygon Invasion, Zygon Inversion, or originally, Invasion of the Zygons, Inversion of the Zygons. That was the original title for it. But remember, Peter Harness, who wrote The Kill of the Moon, who was sort of, um, again, you know, so we'll see about that when I get there, actually. I'll talk about Kill the Moon when I get to Series 8. Um, again, just not really good, really, you know, compared to, like, you know, are too powerful in the Zygons? Hell yes, absolutely, because in the 50th, didn't do much because it was shown Space of the Daleks, of course, and have three Doctors as well. But it just doesn't really work. The whole Isis stuff, as people probably remember back in those days, who remembers Isis, actually, you know, that's heavy-handed terrorism stuff. It really, it, again, it feels a bit dated, really, but it feels hammered in. It does. Um, it just doesn't, you know, again, that really sort of kills the story, really, in a way. But, and also, do we cohabitation with Zygons? You know, that should have been like a Silurian story, really, you know, if you look at it. But, I don't know, something interesting, I don't know. But I don't know if that was part of Peter Harness's idea, or maybe the production team and Moffat's idea. Who knows? We don't even know about that. But, yeah, it's just not very good, really. Units, I think Uni in particular, I saw film, I've been like a bunch of idiots. It's nice to see Rebecca Front with Capaldi, actually, which is interesting. Nice to see Kay uh, Leverage, too, as well. You've got Osgood and whoever, and, and um, Duplicate, Duplicate, whatever. Yeah. Um, but, uh, this is there, you know, you, you know, there should have been, you know, units should have been more in the forefront as well with the Doctor, you know, Doctor Unit story, Zygons, that would have been interesting. You know, like, make it a bit more what you expect, really. You know, take, you know, make uh, Gemma Redgrave on the forefront, of course, along with back front and Capaldi, that would have been an interesting dynamic, really. Again, if it was a solo thing with Capaldi, that would have been interesting. They should, they, they might have been here, he's, he's one of companions, that two-part story. If they ever, you know, like, you know, just get them two along with Capaldi, that would have been interesting, really, you know. But, sadly, again, changes again, so there we go. Um, episode 9, Sleep No More. Um, Mark Gatiss is only, so, um, only, only a single episode on this one. I think the only, the only one episode, like, the single... And an episode, really, on that one. Um, experiments with the found footage st um, stuff, of course, which seems a bit, you know, it seems like, you know, a bit of a cliche at the point. Obviously, they're trying to do something different, which I do congratulate them for trying to do, but it just felt a bit bland, really, to be honest. It felt, felt bland. I won't say it's the worst story, but, you know, it's felt a bit bland, really. I mean, experimentation with different stuff, of course, found footage is interesting, but I'm not a fan of found footage, so there we go, because it's tainted and complete, complete as, of, you know, it's everywhere, so I can't be bothered doing that. You know, I can't be bothered stomach all the way through stuff like that, so there we go. Uh, just not a fan, really. Face the Raven, made by Sarah Dollard. Interesting, of course, you know, Riggsy returns from flat, from Flatline, of course, and Capaldi gets his new coat on, of course. And yeah, it's it's decent, it is. It's a, de it's a, decent, it's a decent little story. I'd probably say it's not the worst. Obviously, builds up to Clara's recklessness, of course, and she ends up getting killed. Which is a something we've been, we've been looking for, you know, looking forward to because you know, like she need she needs to probably die, of course, or she she did, fair enough. Um, obviously, what we've got in series twelve, I'll get there eventually. Um, the next up is Heaven Sent, of course, episode eleven, the grandiose of the Capaldi era, you know, of the Stephen Moffat era, and one of the best stories ever in New Who. I disagree with that because I look back at Heaven Sent and I think it is screams Sherlock. And I'm not a fan of Sherlock, really. So it really screams that. Obviously, it's Capaldi on his own, handling the spread, of course. It's basically in purgatory, really, like he's a living hell, which is, again, pretty, again, interesting thing, you know, in a Roman, in a Roman castle, of course, on some abandoned island. We we think we are. We think he is, but he isn't. Um, 
but I just really think, I just think it's like just like a Sherlock story. Although, I think of how, uh, you know, Moffat wrote this as a potential Big Fish story when it was, Big Fish was announced. He was one of the writers be, you know, being sort of drafted in, but he left, he did. But, apart, but this would have been, you know, one of, one of his first, like, Big Fish stories, of course. Obviously, I think in an interview, interview with Guy Russell, he said, you know, Moffat really wants to make his stamp and make it sort of different, make it new with a different doctor, like a totally new doctor, really. But obviously, what Gary, Nick and Jason wanted, wanted to do was, like, just bring back the old doctors, course, like, from, you know, Davison, Baker, McCoy, McGann, as well, in a, in a couple of years, in, you know, maybe a year or two time. And obviously Moffat sort of disagreed, really, and he flounced out, of course, unlike all the writers like Mark Gayes and Paul Cornell. You know, they still stayed on, did their own interpretation of the, of the Doctors, what they were given, really. And they got a good step at, step at it, really. Um, so obviously this is, you know, let's look at, look at that now recently. It's like, oh, interestingly. So it's basically, his big, so his big fish story has now been adapted to TV, of course, or made into a form of TV. And I'm just not really a big fan, really, of Heaven Sent, you know. It's just a short parallel sort of, sort of tainted, very badly, I would say. You know, but there we go. Like, the whole mind pass and the TARDIS and everything else. It just really doesn't, doesn't work, really. There we go. And finally, we're enough with Hellbent. Um, uh... I give it credit for filming in Fort Ventura. That's a good thing, really. Um, the time of stuff. I think when he gets the whole thing of Clara being extracted from time, that's when the story falls apart. And obviously, Maisie Williams returns, of course, as me. She returned, she returned to Festive Raven, of course. And obviously, there's the thing of this hybrid thing, of course. They think Dr. Half-Human. They think of the Master. They think of all sorts of stuff they do. And it's like, oh, for God's sakes. You know, but it's like, it is, you know, it's too much waffle, too much stuff, of course. And it just goes on forever and ever. And I see there's a TARDIS, of course, like classic, a classic TARDIS, but that's more like dangling shiny keys in your face while the story just, like, goes goes on and on, really. But, um, yeah, it's not very good. And obviously, you, you know, I'm not going to say more about Hellbent. No, a lot of people say about Hellbent, it's like, uh, I'm not a fan of it, really. So there we go. Um... And we finish up with the Husbands of River Song. I might as well add this in as, add this in as, as well. Um, run around. Not the best. Last Prince of Axe since that's one good one plus, really, of course. And obviously, the end scene in Derillion is quite nice, actually. That's probably the best scene. Greg Davis is wasted as hell, of course. And Matt Lucas is in this as Nardo. Although, he's improved more in Series 10, which we'll get to at some point, of course. But here, it gives you a bad impression of Nardo. Like, when you first see him, it's like, who the hell is this character? Man. He's such torturous, absolutely. But absolutely, but uh, but as as we progress on, he gets more better and better. But in this first story, it's just terrible, really terrible introduction. But he gets actually pretty good later on. Uh, as I mentioned before, Great Davis wasted as hell. You know, they should have done more potential with him. Just having have him in a shirt and pair of jeans, you know, and be like a main villain, of course, like some main muscular man trying to strangle and break Ivali's neck or something. You know, that would have been interesting, really. But there we go. It's just a run around and we've got the Harmony Show as well. So, there we go. So, Series 9, that's the bottom of my ranking for New Who, of course. I'll be doing the next one at some point, which we'll find out. Some people probably might, might avoid it. Some people might, might guess what some stuff might be. We'll have to wait and see. But this is the lowest of the New Who ranking. So, there we go. So, Series 9, it's at the bottom. Thank you guys for watching. As always, see you in the next video. And goodbye.